Well, it's 6.02, so I'll go ahead and start. I have the chat up, which means that until I start sharing my screen, I at least can see that. My name is Alicia Farmer, and I'm the Academic Programs Director at the Biological Station. I'm joined by my colleague, Jumana Sada. She's gonna wave, but she's at a noisy place, so, so you get a wave from Jumana. Um, she works, uh, she will be working, we work together and her uh, big piece is the logistics end. So things like housing and transportation and um, all of your health forms and things like that, dining information to the dining hall. So uh, you will hear from both of us as the, as the process goes on of getting you to camp if you're coming to camp, but I wanted you to at least meet Jumana now. Um, and then, yeah, we'll go ahead and, and introduce our other, panelists, uh, Hannah and Mary, and someone else who's named Adam, and he'll join later. That They're here, but they'll introduce themselves as we get farther along. Okay, so jumping right in, I want to tell you about the biological station. So I'm going to share my slides. So this is the another yet another scene from the biological station. Um, and I should say, I guess, welcome to everybody. I'm going to try to keep in my head that in attendance will be some people who have submitted an application, some people who um, maybe are started an application, but they're waiting to hear more before they submit it. And some people who maybe just heard about it for the first time recently, uh, today even, and you're checking it out. And also that uh, we have people coming both from the University of Michigan Ann Arbor campus, as well as the Dearborn, and Flint campuses and from colleges and universities, not only across the state, but across the country. I don't know that that's the case right here in this uh, very call, but every year we have guest students also. The station is open for everybody. So if you have a friend at another institution and you'd like for you know both of you to be at the station for the same period, you can both come, keep that in mind. Uh, let's see, on the little inserted map, that shows where we are. Ann Arbor is down on the little right hand, lower right star. And then the one that's up at the tip of the mitten is near Pelston, Michigan or Douglas Lake, the lake that we're on. And that's where the biological station is and, uh, and has been for since 1909. So for over a hundred years, this space has been owned and operated by the University of Michigan. And of course, for thousands of years before that, it was the home to the Anishinaabe people, the people of the three fires, the Ojibwe, the Odawa, and the Potawatomi Indians. Um, and in fact, there are many people of that uh, lineage, descendants of those people on the areas around the station today. So um, I always think this view minus the bench there is a view that is probably, you know, has been seen for thousands of years by humans and by the first humans in this area. So part of what we do at the biological station and what you're probably most interested in is we offer classes. Um, these are University of Michigan Ann Arbor classes. They count for credit. You don't, if you're, if you're at the University of Michigan Ann Arbor campus, you don't have to apply to have them transfer. They're, they're just as if you take them on campus here. Um, and we do three academic sessions. There's a spring session, from May 21st to June 18th, a summer session, June 25th to July 23rd, and then what we call our extension session. Uh, and these are only open to University of Michigan Ann Arbor students because that extension means they're an extension of a class that's already running either in the winter or fall semester. So for those classes, you have to participate in the Ann Arbor part as well as the biological station. Um, but the other ones, those first two are four week, uh, six day a week academic sessions, and then the extensions are two weeks. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, the classes will start, these, these are start dates of Saturday, and that's because we want you to arrive with a couple days to acclimate to the, to the camp. Um, we do some orienting of you to the area. And so the classes actually start Monday, a couple days later, the 23rd of May, the 27th of June, and August 8th. This, by the way, is a student in, or several students from our Florilegium extension course, where they um, study plants and then do illustrative techniques. So among the courses that we offer, 
Um, and I should say our classes are all, and I'll talk about this a bit later, but they're field courses. Um, and our panelists, our student panelists will say a lot about what field courses are. But in general, think like outside, all day, immersion, what other things, place-based, uh, you're living, breathing, sometimes tasting the class uh, all day long. So for our spring session, we are offering these sets of courses and you would take one from the first column, which is our Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday classes. And then you take a second class because they're each uh, only three days a week. We want you to take a full week's worth. Uh, the second set is Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Everything here is three credits, except for I should note the microbiology class is four credits. And that's because it matches the Ann Arbor um, campus class. So as much as possible, like with general ecology lecture and general ecology lab, we are now mirroring what is happening in Ann Arbor in terms of those classes and the content, except that we give it uh, a bit more of a field twist. So general ecology lecture, you'll learn about all the, you know, the different kinds of ecology, population ecology, community ecology, um, but you'll also go out and see examples of it in the real world. And likewise, the laboratory, all of the labs are gonna be field-based around the station. So whether you're counting snails or identifying tree species in a given area, um, or looking at gravestones at the Bliss Cemetery to see when people were born and died, those are the kinds of labs you'll be doing around Northern Michigan. Um, also in the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we have nature, nurture, and organismal diversity. For any of you pre-med types especially, or anyone curious about things like CRISPR technology, this is a, a class where you, it's eco, evo, dev, I, I've learned, which is ecology, evolution, and development. Um, you'll be doing some manipulation of the genes in butterfly eggs, and then looking at observed differences or potential differences in traits in the resulting butterflies. Uh, that's with Professor Green. And ethnobotany is a class that looks at how uh, the people who have lived in Michigan long before European settlement use plants for food, for medicine, for cultural purposes. So it's a lot of plant identification, but then also learning about um, the ways that plants and humans have worked together and uh, used each other beneficiarily and harmfully over time. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, in addition to the ecology lecture and lab, there's a microbiology class, which is like the one here. You, uh, you learn all of those lab techniques, but do field work to get samples. And then agroecology is how, um, well, applying ecological principles to farming, uh, produce farming, not livestock. So you'll get to visit some area farms and do projects with them. And then for the summer, uh, again, we offer the general ecology lecture and lab and then extra courses. The flora of Middle Earth is about, uh, it mixes the hobbits and um, the books from the Lord of the Rings trilogy, their use and mention of plants with a field botany class. So it's mostly field botany, but you will do some reading from um, the Tolkien books. Field mammalogy is studying the mammals the charismatic megafauna, as we say, around Northern Michigan. Uh, chipmunks, mice, you'll, uh, she just got some echolocation goggles or something. So you get to see um, work with bats and other uh, maybe flying squirrels, things, I guess they don't echolocate so much, maybe. Anyway, lots of mammals, mammals, mammals. And then um, the biology and ecology of fishes class is kind of what it says. You'll be in and out of a lot of the streams, rivers, and lakes in and around uh, northern Michigan. That one may also include a cruise on a tall ship, the Inland Seas, which has partnered with us for several classes to actually go out into Lake Michigan and do some collecting. On the other side of that page, the only other courses to mention would be forest ecosystems. You learn a lot with, um, I haven't been mentioning other professors. I won't go back and do that, but um, this one is co-taught by Professor Ibanez and Professor Cousins, both from SEAS. And you'll learn a lot about um, how soil and forest types interact with each other and what you can predict from um, looking at, a different, at different forest types. And lastly, whoops, microbes in the wild is another one of these microbial classes. This is with Professor Duhame, and she studies both the 
um, bacteria and the phages, the viruses that feed on bacteria in the, in the Great Lakes proper as well as inland lakes. So actually right now she's, she was just up this week collecting plastic samples out of Douglas Lake where we are um, because she's got a research project studying what feeds, what microbes feed on plastics in the Great Lakes. And then lastly, these three classes for legium, which I mentioned is the, the drawing skills of plants as well as the, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. One more that I forget to mention, it was hidden at the bottom of my page, and this is a biggie, GLACE, uh, the Great Lakes Arts, Cultures and Environments Program. If you've heard of NELP, New England Literature Program that the English department runs, this is their sister program for that. And it's offered at the biological station. So instead of New England, it looks at the Great Lakes. And the three instructors that are, te that are teaching it this year are going to be doing all kinds of interrogations and ex explorations of landscape, um, including Fritz Swanson, who's bringing up a printing press. And among other things, you're going to be printing leaves and things that you collect. Uh, Eve, Eva Roos, who is a landscape architecture, landscape architect, uh, but she's going to have you doing some garden work at the Burt Lake Band of Ottawa Indians uh, Healing Garden, which she has uh, helped install. And then Margaret Newton, who is a visiting professor from the University of Wisconsin at Madison. Um, and among other sh things, she teaches Anishinaabe language. So the, the class will be um, learning about the language of the Anishinaabe people. I guess it's Anishinaabe Moen is the name of the language. Uh, you'll learn a bit of that as well as, as see how that different style, that verb-based language um, reveals things about our relationship with non-human and human beings that English and a lot of um, European languages do not. Okay. Quickly, these extensions, if you are um, either in a, the class now or a class in the, would take a class in the fall that pairs with these, then you might wanna take Florilegium, pharmaceutical discovery from cyanobacteria, collect blue-green algae, and then find out what products, what um, metabolic products from those algae can be used for things like um, not only drugs like cancer drugs, but things like insecticides or um, even sunscreen, they told me. And then rhetoric in our worlds. This is an English class happening right now. So if you're in that class, you can take the extension. Uh, this is Elise Portnoy's class, Professor Portnoy's class, that will be looking at the biological station um, as a subject of how rhetoric, how language is read by people who observe it. So what, what is it like to arrive at the station and not only see you know, written signs, but the unwritten messages that you get from the, the worlds around or the space around you. Okay, blah, blah, blah. And I'm ripping through these slides. We have scholarships. So we don't want anybody to not uh, apply to the station because of cost. We want you to come, we wanna make this uh, possible. We have our own scholarships and we will certainly evaluate uh, basically on need. You can, we don't ask anything above and beyond uh, you, you know, your indication that you would like to be considered for a scholarship and any extenuating circumstances uh, that sort of the U of M financial aid office profile wouldn't give us. You know, so if you are one of three kids in college, uh, that's something that we might not know otherwise. If you have a parent who became unemployed during the pandemic, that would be a good thing to put in, your, in the application. Um, if you work 20 hours a week, uh, that's a good thing for us to know. So tell us as much sort of about your financial situation and that application is in our courses application. It's, it's all one thing. Um, and the deadline for, for our first sort of round of review is March 15th. You may apply after that date, anytime, you know, up until close to when you arrive, but we will start reviewing financial aid or scholarship applications on the 15th. Also, if you're at the University of Michigan, if you're in the College of Literature, Science and Arts, there are spring summer study scholarships um, and you can apply for those. And then of course, wherever you are, you should ask your financial aid office to consider you for spring or summer aid.
I'm almost done. We're almost to the good stuff. Uh, I'm gonna skip this slide because we'll talk more about what field courses are, except I want to just mention for the very first time, but not the last, you should definitely not take any online courses at the same time that you're at the biological station. You will not have time to do another course. We realized that we all got in that habit during the pandemic, but this is not the place to also have online commitments. Lastly, I wanna mention if anybody is interested more in doing research uh, than taking classes, and in particular, if you've never done research before, maybe you didn't get a chance to do your op or work in somebody's lab, but you're curious what it's like, we have an RU, Research Experience for Undergraduates program, and that um, application deadline is this Friday, the 15th of February, but we continue to, um, that's like when they start reviewing the applications. So if this is the first you've heard of it and you would love to be considered for this program, uh, get your application in as soon as possible, but I would say you've got, you know, at least a week or two um, deadline because they review applications until they've filled all the spots. And there are nine, I believe, spots. It's international, internationally, maybe, certainly nationally competitive, um, but the focus is for people who have not yet done research. It's a chance to get your fingers and feet wet doing research at the station. And notice there is a $6,000 stipend uh, during the time that you do this, plus transportation if you're coming, you know, basically to get you to the station. Okay, that's it. Oh, Alicia. Uh, this is our web URL and an email address where you can always direct questions if you have them. They'll find their way to, to Jumana and me and we will answer them. But I'm going to stop the screen share now. Much easier than starting it. All right. And I think now I would love to switch over to the student panel part. And let's see, maybe Hannah and Mary, you can each introduce yourself as far as what you're studying and what you took at the station. Yeah, okay. Um, hi, I'm Hannah. I am a second year master's student in CS School for Environment and Sustainability. Um, but I went to undergrad at U of M, uh, majoring in PITE, Program in the Environment. So I've been going up to the station since 2017. Um, I took, yeah, <laughs> it's been a while. Um, I took a uh, class extension up there in 2017. It was um, for Global Change, Michela, or Michaela Arnibaldi's class. And then I was up there 2019 for spring term where I took ornithology and then the summer term where I took general ecology and limnology. And then I've been up there a few times as a TA for general ecology. And then recently this last summer, I was a student in um, Melissa Duhame's microbes in the wild class. And I actually got to go out on the inland seas ship so if you have any questions about that class or that ship, um, happy to answer them. And then this spring, actually, I'm going to be a TA for the general ecology lecture section. Yeah. Hi, I'm Mary. Um, on the very opposite spectrum of Hannah, I am a sophomore currently in Pite, and I, I've only been to the bio station once, which was last summer, and I took uh, forest ecology and general ecology, you know, forest ecosystems and general ecology. There we go. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm currently in Pite, and I'm also majoring in economics, so yes different levels of knowledge of the station, but I loved it so much. <laughs> um, and I should say that I have some questions I can ask of these women, but also since we can view the chat, if any of you who are here would like to ask questions of either anything about me, ask questions, don't ask questions about me, ask questions about anything I showed in the slides, or if you have anything that you'd love the student perspective on, please type those in and we'll be sure to answer them. Um, but I think one thing, if each of you would, would say a bit about what, what a typical day is like, and I, you know, to the degree that there's typical, but what is a day of class like at the station? 
Yeah. So um, it depends on the class. When I took birds, I was waking up at 6 a.m. every day. But when I took every other class, I would wake up in a more normal time, like eight. Um, so you'd get breakfast and then you go out to the field and you spend all day in the field. Essentially, you pack yourself a lunch um, and you take out to the field or you have lunch. Um, it depends how far you go. But yeah, um, you just go to the field and you have a lot of fun and you learn a lot of science and then you come back, have dinner um, with your class. You never leave your class. Um, yeah, you uh, have dinner with all your friends and classmates. And then the evenings, sometimes there are uh, class sessions in the evenings, but most of the time that was a time to do homework and or just relax. Yeah, I think Hannah did a fantastic job covering that. We would just be in the field all day, all different parts of Michigan. We went to a bunch of really different, cool biodiversity spots all over sort of northern Michigan where we were. Yeah, you did a great job covering it. I got nothing to add. <laughs> uh, at Mary, someone asks if you're planning to return to the station. Oh, Wait, I would have to put you on the spot. <laughs> I would absolutely love to be able to return to the station. Um, it was definitely my favorite experience that I've had in college so far. And is the reason I picked my pipe major. So if I could go back, um, I definitely would. I feel a little bit nervous about going to the station, being a double major. I'm trying to sort of get the classes that I need covered in both of those things so I can graduate on time because I think with my specialization that I have in Pite that I chose I'm not sure if any of the course offerings right now would fulfill them but if I ever have a summer or even like a semester where I'm not doing anything I would absolutely love to return um I really want to take ornithology <laughs> they didn't offer it last year but I I love birds so much so that's definitely like if possibly in the future I would love that, that is yeah and that is on the books for next year 2023 so it may in the spring because right we want to get them during migration um and I was gonna yeah, the same person asks about whether people whether it's common to come multiple years and I would say probably not common but I think primarily that's because people tend to, to not hear about us in time so often if we get, you know, if someone comes after their first or second year, then they might also come back another summer. Yeah. Because yeah, the, with some planning, you can knock out a lot of required courses, but if you don't hear about it until, you know, your junior or senior year, and then it's like, okay, well, I'll take ecology because I got to get rid of that anyway for, you know, my major, then there aren't a lot of, a lot of other options. So, okay. Um, no other questions yet in the chat, but I was wondering what non-student, non-academic time looks like in camp or at the station. Yeah, hiking. Um, there's a lot of trails at the station, just literally right next to your cabin. Um, so a lot of hiking and kind of just exploring the area, like driving to maybe Wilderness State Park or like crossing the bridge, going to St. Ignace in the UP. Um, but if you're staying in camp, um, honestly, it's a lot of like playing games. Uh, we played a lot of Euchre. Um, there's this card game called Ecologies that, um, yeah, if you see me up there this spring, we will be playing Ecologies. So yeah, it's just, you know, like, you kind of just get to sit around and hang out and play games and yeah. Yeah, I would say that definitely the social experience you have up there is incredibly like an, a really important part of my time there. Um, I agree with everything that Hannah said. They have a lot of really cool access to like boats and kayaks, things like that. You can go out on the water if you like. Um, something that we did pretty much like a couple times a week um, was there's not a lot of light pollution up there at the station. So if you haven't seen the night sky without any night pollution, it is absolutely incredible. So we would all just go like lay in a field and look up and like spot meteors, which was really fun. Yeah, it was wonderful. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I, will, I discovered the Q&A. So there are a couple questions there. And this is a good one for, for the two of you. Was the workload really strenuous seeing that there are these two classes? And this is probably, I mean, it's funny because um, this year we're having a new format where we have these two three-day classes. Uh, when you were there, Mary, it was two classes kind of at the same time, right? Uh, during COVID, it, it was told, it was bizarre and hopefully we won't ever have to do it again where it was two weeks online and then in person at the station for a couple of weeks and then back online at the end. So let's hope that that's an experiment that got us through, but done. And then Hannah, you've kind of had a bit of everything, but yeah, what would you say about the, the strenuousness of the workload? I think it depends a lot on the class. Um, like I, when I was up there in the spring, um, cause the spring term, when I was up there, it was one class six days a week. So that's like, probably equal to what this would be because just because it's two classes I mean the workload is going to reflect that it's only three days a week um so when I was up there uh like ethnobotany was um a stressed bunch like it's an amazing class and they loved it so so much but you learn a lot um whereas when I was in ornithology, you know, we would go birding in the morning and then we'd come back and kind of just hang out in the afternoon when the birds weren't very active. Um, but overall, I would say that you're not going to be overworked. Um, something that's really great about the bio station is that you do develop a really unique relationship with the professor and with your TA. And you can be honest with them about the workload and you can tell them how you're feeling and if you're feeling overwhelmed. And I think you'd be really surprised by how receptive they will be and understanding. I feel like everything I'm just saying is like agreeing with Hannah, but yeah, um, I felt um, it. I was a little bit stressed out for the first week that I was up there, but I think that was kind of on me for having no experience in um, ecology or environmental science at all. And then jumping into like a 300 level class in something I didn't know anything about. Um, I, I'm not sure how much of it was COVID, but we got up there and then we had about two weeks to memorize the Latin names of like 30 trees and learn how to identify them. But like Hannah said also, the professors completely, they understand what it's like. They're not just going to keep pushing if they feel like the class is too stressed. And um, I think they were, they felt maybe a little bit that we were a little stressed and they started taking some more time off and just doing some more, just being in nature. I, I never felt like completely over my head while I was there. It, it was, I kind of enjoyed it. You get really close with people and it's sort of a challenge that you're working with your friends up there to kind of get through your schoolwork. I loved it. That's a good point. I, th I think the faculty um, are, are there because they really, they love teaching in this field setting and they like teaching period. And so they try to keep in touch with how the students are feeling and adjust the course. I know I've heard from other students in other classes, if they sense that everybody's totally freaked out about something, they'll try to, you know, change a deadline or work with you with the class as a whole to make it feel doable. So I wanted to respond. I think in the chat, someone asked about transportation. We, um, have minivans. So this is, these are what you will go out in all your field trips in, uh, they're, Chrysler minivans that seat seven people very tightly, more like four to five people comfortably. And we take them, we, we actually are always gonna, we will let you know, we're looking for student drivers to drive the minivans up from Ann Arbor to the station at the start of each session. And so that's how you can get up there. You can carpool with us in the minivans as well as return uh, at the end of the session in them. Or you're welcome to, drive yourself up there or get dropped off and picked up. So it's kind of a mix of everything. Last year, because of COVID, we, we tried to have everybody come in the minivans, but, um, but this year we're gonna ease off again and give more flexibility. So, um, and I see Jacob asks, is it unreasonable to take two classes uh, and do it? It looks like the question is like to take 
because everybody takes two classes, but to do spring session and summer session in the same summer. And I will say that we always have some people that do that. And even some people who only think they're coming for spring and then they love it. And so they make arrangements to stay for summer. So it's definitely a, a thing that happens, um, but maybe I'll st let's flip it up. We'll start and see, Mary, do you have any other thoughts on that? Like, does it seem like you'd be burned out if you did back-to-back -back sessions? Uh, I have not experienced this personally, but I, I don't think you would get too burned out. I think it would be a really cool thing really really unique experience to have two different sets of classes and there's at least a week in between i think there may even be two i'm trying to remember so there there is some downtime and and people can if you if you need to stay in camp during that break you, we can make arrangements for you to do that so you don't have to leave and then come back up again i don't know hannah if you have any thoughts to add yeah, um, I've actually done this. I've stayed for the spring and summer. Um, of course, it was only three classes back then, not four, but um, it was amazing. It was incredible. Um, I'm so glad that I did it. I wish I could have stayed longer. Um, for that week in between classes, I actually drove up to the UP all the way to the western edge and went to the Porcupine Mountains and like spent a couple days there and then came back to the station. And the fun thing is that um, these classes are really fun. Like you, you want to take the class. So I think that that really helps you not get burnt out. I mean, you're not taking Orgo, you're not taking Calc. Um, you're taking like that Tolkien class, which by the way, I wish I could take, I want to take that so bad. Um, yeah, no, you, you don't, I, I don't think you'll get burnt out. Um, yeah, no, it's such a fun experience. Then you get a different group of people in the spring and summer. The station itself is different in the spring and summer. It's colder in the spring. It's a lot warmer in the summer. Um, so yeah, there's just different experiences. I'd forgotten that, Hannah. That's a good perspective. Thank you. Um, so there's a couple questions. Someone asks about how competitive it is and also if there are any prerequisites and, and those are related. It's not competitive in the, um, it's just first come first serve, you know, you're already at a college university, community college, you are in college classes. So that really isn't um, an issue. The one thing is we have a couple classes in particular spring general ecology lecture tends to fill up. It's, it's very close to full right now. And then we start a waiting list. Um, it looks like we're approaching waitlist time with the forest ecosystems class in the summer. So just, you know, first come, first serve, get your application in for those. And then the prerequisites question, if you haven't had an introductory biology class of any kind, then um, I would want to talk to you or we would, we would want to find out a bit more about your background to make sure that you're sort of prepared to succeed in these classes. Because as you could tell, like you get hit with a lot right away. And so if there's some fundamental concepts that you haven't covered in maybe a high school AP biology or an intro bio class of some kind, then you might find yourself struggling to kind of keep up at the start. That's the only thing in terms of like, yeah, but uh, prerequisites, uh, an intro bio. And then if you've had, you know, as a bonus, it helps to have had an upper level lab science class of another kind. Um, and then someone else asked about if we, if you need to do anything else to satisfy practical experience. And I think you're talking about, I assume, oh, love it, the pipe. Yeah, kitty cameos are totally welcome. Uh, practical, practical experience at Program the Environment. Any class at the biological station will satisfy that requirement. You don't have to do anything on top of it. And in fact, we've on our website for the, for the um, I think it's under the student section, we have an area that's called fulfilling requirements at UMBS or something. And we list all the different, you know, there's various EEB biodiversity and um, some of our classes meet, I think um, forest ecosystems is natural science distribution, you know, so we have different classes that meet requirements and we list those. So, okay, I think, oh, there've been more, more questions. These are good questions. Can you all see the Q and A too? I assume everybody can, okay. How many undergraduates are typically at the station? Um, typically around 100 per session. And I, I think Hannah knows what that looks like. It was probably pretty different for you, Mary. 
Um, but assuming, and we do at this point, it looks like we'll be able to kind of run a normal session, knock on wood, uh, this year. Spring session would have around 100 people, 100 students plus faculty and instructors and a few researchers. Summer gets really busy because then we have a lot of people who come from other in institutions and the University of Michigan to do research. And so we fill up with research teams of faculty and graduate students, and there can be up to 250 people in camp. People, faculty, and, and um, will bring their kids. So especially in the summer, there'll be like these little kid bike gangs riding around. It's for real, right, Hannah? <laughs> it's kind of terrifying. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. There is like a whole, a whole gaggle of like eight-year-olds riding on a bike, like riding up to you and you're just like, whoa. <laughs> and, and because they like have grown up there, they're very comfortable asking sciencey questions. You know, they'll pick up whatever, a frog or a turtle and ask you about it. So it's kind of fun. Uh, as far as classes that will be repeated in the future, yes, I am working on getting a schedule where we know what's gonna be every other year and every year. Um, Microbes in the Wild, I believe, is going to continue to operate. Uh, this year, it's a three credit regular summer session class. And then next year, it would be an extension class. One of those, like how Hannah took it, where you would take two weeks at the station and then continue it in the fall, um, specifically that one. But, but we are starting to put notes and I'll, there'll be more of this probably in a month or so as to which ones will run, say, an odd number years and even numbered years. Um, general ecology is one that we run every year. I think forest ecosystems, ethnobotany, those are every year. And then we always try to have something aquatic. So this year we have the biology of fish, but often there's limnology or, um, yeah, we used to have rivers, lakes, and wetlands, but I think limnology is just gonna be its replacement. Let's see, I'm reading your comment or your question, Jacob. You couldn't go after 22, you take time off classes. So how, oh, um, so if you, if you were admitted before and didn't come, it's kind of like we start over again. You know, it's, it's an application cycle for this year. So if you um, I go ahead and get your application in as soon as possible, it's a pretty straightforward application. Um, but yeah, I don't, it wouldn't, it would neither give you a leg up nor harm you for this year. Um, COVID policies. I sus we are going to follow what the University of Michigan is doing at that time. So if you, if you were there now, it would be masks in indoors in classes. Um, but you know, you wouldn't have to have them in your rooms and out in the field. So it's actually a nice place to be during COVID because outside time is unmasked. Um, this year we had the dining hall closed and people ate outside, which was different. Typically people eat in the dining hall, which is a, its own very nice experience. Um, but I think, I don't know what you all thought, eating outside I thought was amazing. While I'm reading this one and then I'll prepare to answer it, could each of you say a bit about the accommodations, <laughs> both your, like the cabins, and uh, don't don't hold anything back and the food. Yeah, um, yeah, the cabins are cabins are rustic. Um, that's that's the way to describe it. They're rustic. Um, <laughs> uh, you may get critters in your cabin, but that's okay. They are they live there all year and we come to take a class for like a month. Um, it's their home. And so, you know, you kind of just live with them. They're your roommates. Um, the bathrooms are like community style bathrooms. So you like walk to your bathroom, uh, but they're kept clean and, you know, there's some bugs and critters, but it's clean. And um, yeah, oh, the food can be good. The food can be really good. The food can also be a little not great, um, but they are always accommodating for um, allergies and dietary restrictions. Um, oh my gosh, I can't remember her name. The the head of the of the kitchen, Lori. 
Lori, she's the sweetest person ever. Um, when I was there last spring, she would like ask, you know, your name and she would know what you like. She knew that I never wanted a side salad. Um, she was just, she was really, really great. So yeah, yeah, pretty good. I really enjoyed cabin life a lot. Um, I'm not quite sure what it will be like this summer, but because of COVID, we all had like our own cabins. So space cells. Um, they are like, some of them are right on the water, which is really cool. You open your back door and you're like on a beach. And you're like, this is such a nice way to start my day. Um, but, but because of how old the camp is, something that I found really cool is that there's a lot of graffiti in the cabins, but sometimes it's from like 1920. <laughs> I just, I just thought that was super cool. There's writing from like all over the world in different languages. So you can, you can really see the history of that place represented in like on the walls. I thought that was really cool. Food, I enjoyed it for the most part. Um, I'm not a picky person at all, but yeah, I thought it was delicious. For some reason, I really vibed with the overnight oats that they had every day for breakfast. I still think about them a lot. I don't know how to make my oats that good. Yes. Yeah. I thought those were amazing. Also, I think they have a ton of sugar. <laughs> Probably. They were, <laughs> they were <tasty>. so good. <laughs> they the will share recipe. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I um, I have the recipe for their granola, which I don't think they had this year because of COVID, but but they will give out recipes if you really like something that you've had. So keep that in mind. You have their granola recipe? I will totally send that to you. No, yeah, the granola is the best. It's so good. <laughs> so good. And the recipe, it, it's good. Um. I see that someone asks, by the way, I noticed that it's 645. So obviously you are welcome. Anyone's welcome to leave and I will, we will continue or I can stay to answer questions for a few more minutes. But if you have to leave, I guess I just want to encourage, if you have any questions, please contact um, me. You can email me directly, farmeral, farmeral at umich.edu or the umbs at umich.edu is a good way to get in touch with us if you have to go. But I wanted, um, there was a question about the quality of the internet, which I would be curious to know the student perspective. Let's start maybe with Mary. Um, it We have internet throughout camp, but it's definitely spotty here and there. Yes. Um, internet in any of the buildings I found to be totally okay. There's a lot of different classroom buildings sort of on the hill at UMBS, and I never had a problem with anything there. Um, it, it's super spotty in cabins. We were, I don't exactly know how this works, but the cabins are tin. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Uh, yeah, it, it's really not a big deal if you like just need to pop up to a classroom really quick to get some Wi-Fi to do stuff. They're really, everything's like kind of near each other. Yeah, yeah, there's plenty of, um, yeah, your cabin will probably not have the best Wi-Fi service, but there's Wi-Fi all over camp, um, even on the lake. There's the chatterbox that you can sit at or near and you'll have Wi-Fi. Uh, the dining hall, all the classroom buildings, um, the dorm, and yeah, yeah, all that has Wi-Fi. So you will not be without Wi-Fi. And I got rid of that question went away but um another component was are there any restrictions and no it's this is not like new england literature program we don't take your phones or anything you, you're welcome to use any device anytime any place um and as to whether there's a curfew we have quiet hours which is i believe what 10 or 11 at night until seven in the morning um and it the sound really travels including across the water so if you think that you've hiked out sort of you know away from camp and you're sitting by the water and you're trash talking about somebody that's going to go right all the way across the lake into camp um, so we we often actually hear people who decide to take parties or you know noise out from camp if it's along the water but no no curfew you are you know we treat you as adults you don't have to stay in camp you can um you know come and go as you need to there are grocery stores in Sheboygan and Petoskey, which are, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes away. Um, so people come and go all the time. It's pretty laid back, I think, in terms of those kind of, we, we need you to be, you know, good humans to each other, but other than that, um, it's pretty, yeah. Okay, I believe we have come, is that it? The end of the, 
the questions and the time. Any parting words, Hannah or Mary? Go to the station. <laughs> I've been to the station and to Camp Davis. Um, so I think that I can say that the bio station is best. I, my, my brother goes to Michigan State and I'm literally trying to convince him to come up to our bio station for the summer. Um, yeah, I love it. It's amazing. You'd have, you'll have an incredible experience. Yes, absolutely agreed. I literally, it was such a hugely defining part of my college experience. I mean, I'm not even halfway through, but I like picked my major because of the experience I had up there. Some of the, my closest friends that I've had through the year I've met at the bio station. It's just, it's so unique. I don't know. I, I really love field-based classes. Like this, I, they're shortened classes. So they're shorter than the ones we take on campus. But for some reason, everything just like stuck with me. And I still remember a a lot of the stuff that I learned up there. It's, it's so cool. Wow. Thank you both for your time and insight. And uh, thanks everybody for attending. Hopefully we will see you all up at the biological station this spring or summer. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>